Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Since Mother's Day is coming up, I thought it would be a good opportunity to paint some lilies. I'm going to be using a photo that I took. I actually posted this photo to Instagram. I'm gonna use it as my reference photo. So I've just lightly sketched out the artwork in pencil first. And I'm going in with a really light mix of Potter's Pink. The first layer, as always, is going to be the lightest layer because with watercolor, we want to work from light to dark whenever possible. And for the lightest areas that are almost white, I'm going to leave those clear of paint. So we want the paper to always try to shine through for those parts because once again, with watercolor, the highlighted areas, you generally want to try to leave those untouched because the paper is going to act as the highlight. So basically I'm just painting on some of those mid-tone areas with the lightest shade. And then for some of the darker areas, I drop in a little bit more of a concentrated mix of Potter's Pink mixed with a little bit of Ultramarine and a little bit of Permanent Rose. I'm also working in sections for this piece. I just find it a lot easier if I work in sections as opposed to trying to do the entire piece at one time. So I work on one section and then let that dry while I work on another section. And then once that first section is dried, I can go back in and do another layer right on top. I'm also drawing my brush off and using the edge of it to blend out some of the harsher edges. That's going to give some of the petals a softer look. And when working on some of the darker areas, I'm using that darker mix that I mentioned earlier, and I'm just placing those in the more shadowed areas on the reference photo. As always, all of the supplies that I use are going to be listed in the description box below. Right now, I'm using a silver black velvet brush in size six. I really like this brush because the tip is so fine. It really allows you to get into those harder to paint areas, um, areas that you might need a detail brush for. This brush pretty much compensates for that, but it also allows you to get a nice thick line if you push down harder on the belly of the brush. So it's an all around really decent brush. I highly recommend this brush. I use it a lot. With those previous areas dry, I can now go in with a second layer. So I am using the same light mixture that I used previously, but applying it on top of that already dried layer is going to just make it a little bit darker in certain areas, just because of the translucency with the water and the paint. So this layer is going to be focused on some of those darker areas and concentrating on some of the folds and the texture of each of the petals. The darker mix that I'm using here is just a stronger concentration of Potter's Pink. Potter's Pink is a really nice pink, kind of purpley tinted shade. It is from the Windsor & Newton Professional line, the one that I'm using, and I do find it is a little bit more um, grainy than some of the other colors. So I do find that when I use it, I have to kind of mix it a little bit more than I would regular paint. Not that it's not regular paint, um, but some colors are just a little bit more grainy than others just due to the pigments that are used in them. So I've gone in with a little bit of olive green and I've completed those stems with the little, um, what are they called? Blossoms <laughs> at the top. And then I've gone in with burnt umber and completed all of the little seed areas in the center of the flowers. I'm going in again and completing some of those more shadowed areas using the darker mix, but not 
totally dark so it's not like a completely concentrated mix it's still about the same concentration but again because i am layering and layering and layering all of these um mixtures of paint with the transparency layered on top of one another it's just going to make it more opaque i know that's kind of a given but for people who don't know that's how it works <laughs> So it was about this time in the painting that I decided that when I was finished painting I did want to add a few extra details so I wanted to go in with some colored pencils afterwards and just sort of define some things and give it a more interesting mixed media type look. So you will see that near the end of the video what I decided to do but for now I'm just going to continue adding layers and building up those darker tones. This little flower in the center here was quite lighter than the other pink flowers. It was more of a white, so I really wanted that to be a lot lighter than the other flowers. So I just very sparingly added a really, really light mix of Potter's Pink. I'm going in with a smaller brush now and I am just going to continue splotching on some darker colors now that the bases of the flowers are in, I can kind of go in and be a little bit more loose with my brush strokes and just add in some of those darker tones wherever I think it needs them. I switched to this brush just because it had a less pointy tip. It's definitely more of a roundy type tip and it's pretty much the same size all the way through so there isn't really much of a belly to it so i just figured it would be able to get into some of those areas um, that i wanted a little bit thicker lines and it would be the same width all the way through if that makes any sense i don't know it just felt good at the time to use that brush so sometimes that's what happens i just grab a brush that feels like the right one to use and that's what i end up using since this flower here was white, um, I wanted it to be a little bit more tan looking in the darker areas. So I did add in a little bit of burnt umber and still using that really, really light wash, I just sort of bumped up the shadowed areas. I'm going in now with a really, really, really light wash of, or sorry, a light mix of lamp black and that's gonna give me some of those grayer shadowy areas. It's just going to help define some of those darker areas a little bit better um, while introducing sort of a different tone so that it's not all completely pink because I did find that it was starting to get a little bit too monochrome looking, a little too single color looking with all of the pink. So I did wanna add in a different tone and I thought that the gray shade would be a good way to do that. And now I'm going in and darkening those green areas, just using the same colors and adding a little bit of shadow detail to those as well. With a little bit of lamp black, I'm going in now and adding some darker areas to those seeds. I'm just kind of dotting this on so it gives it a little tiny bit of texture and also darkens those a little bit more. With a really, really diluted mix of yellow okra and um, burnt umber, I created sort of this tan color for the stamen, is that how you say it, uh, of the um, centers of the flowers. So this is what it looked like when I finished painting it. I did want to do something else, so I grabbed my colored pencils and I started going in with similar colors to just add little bits of outlines and little details throughout. I wanted it to look a little bit more sketchy looking, I guess, around the edges. You don't have to do this step, I just kind of wanted to at the time. Um, and then I decided to go in and add just a couple little highlights using my Jelly Roll white pen. Because we left a lot of the highlighted areas white, I didn't really need to do too many highlights, maybe just some of the ones where the petals have to be separated a little bit from some of the darker areas, just so they don't get lost. 
So I'm going to include a downloadable print of this piece if you guys want to maybe give it for Mother's Day. I'm gonna put that on my Patreon page and hope that you guys like this tutorial or speed paint or whatever you wanna call it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and pop on over to my Patreon page if you want exclusives. I really hope to see you guys in the next video.